the top half, the, the human half, is the poet or the, or the flute player, mm. who, Pan being immortal, he's never completely satisfied, even if he has love with the mm. girl when he catches her, because he always goes away alone. Because he's immortal, he's never going to die. Yeah. Poor chap. He just said that his whole half is always trying to chase, is always constantly chasing. But his whole half is a bit like a serial killer, is a bit like a serial killer. Because he's always chasing, but the female victim will die. But he's always living. So he's constantly in this state of chasing. 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 And in his spare time, he plays the flute. He is he spends a lot of time chasing the women. Then, when he is bored, when he is bored, he starts to play the flute. He starts to play the flute. So it's tinged with milk as well. Yes. What? Color with a little melancholy as well as lust. Okay. Maybe it's just it's just maybe 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 it's just She was the darling of all Paris. She was very small, and she grew up as a street singer, a sort of beggar. She was very small, and she grew up as a street singer, a sort of beggar. 
somehow she got recognised. She had an enormous um, power in her voice, mm. but she was very small. But she somehow reached everybody's heart. In the and, um, she had lots of boyfriends who were much younger than her. She was always in the newspaper. New boyfriend, only 20 years younger. <laughs> 就是她非常有名,就是她每個男朋友都比她小20歲以上。And she was somehow very sad, and I think she died from a drug overdose.她就是一直都很哀傷,然後可能是因為嗑藥過多而死亡。But when she died, all of Paris turned out to watch the funeral.所以她死了之後,她死了之後,就巴黎人非常難過,然後他們都是非常隆重的葬禮來迎接她。and so this is Tulang Omar of the Art, wonderful, very spirited lady. Villa Lobos is the most famous composer to have come out of Brazil. 
He lived until about 1960-something. He wrote an enormous quantity of music. I think he did ten times as much as most other composers. He had a thousand opus numbers, I think. Uh, um, he was a cellist and a pianist and a composer. And there's a picture of him I have on one of the records at home. Thick set man, big heavy arms, good for playing the cello. Mm -hmm. no, and he was smoking a big cigar. Um, he's, he, he got into writing a whole lot of entirely Brazilian music. Um, and Brazilian music has three factors. It has the European influence, the Bach and the other classical composers, and it also has the laments, the sad songs from the black slaves who are taken forcibly from their homes in Africa and made to work in the plantations, and also from the Indians, the American Indians of the jungle in Brazil who swing from one tree to the other on the creepers going like like Tarzan going, boy, yo, 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 yo. Basi 南美,就是美洲原始,叫什麼? Okay, <笑><笑> so I come to, now comes the story. You see, people often ask, why is this piece got this strange title, the Czech Whistle? It comes about from when Villa Lobos was a young man. Young composers have to go out and find folk songs of their country. And in the 1920s sometime, he was going round the mountains in the Andes. And he was in a range of hills called the Huatlochito Mountains. And he was in a he arrived at a railway station with big grey blue mountains all round. And a funny little town, and he had three hours to wait for the connecting train to the next place he got to. So he said, Well, I'll try and get a cup of coffee. So he walked into the town, and all the Grey houses were apparently deserted. There was nobody on the streets. There was one donkey tied up to a, a post and one man sleeping under his big circular hat. And 
And finally he found a large square piazza in the center of the town with arches all the way around, old Spanish style architecture. And in the far corner of the square, he saw a cafe. And he finally he walked over to this place and he found in it there were three musicians playing a sad waltz in the corner. 嗯,結果他後來就看到在角落的地方就有三個音樂家他們在演奏,然後在演奏很哀傷的音樂。And uh, and in the other corner was the most amazingly big coffee machine. Maybe the first espresso machine ever. <laughs> It had a great firebox underneath the water. And it had two great brass containers, the copper containers. Brass lids, brass tubes, and a pressure gauge and a safety valve on top. And on top of all this was a brass eagle. So he said to the waiter, can I have a coffee? And the waiter said, yes, but it will take time, sir. <laughs> And so the waiter came back with some firewood to light under the coffee machine. <laughs> and then the musicians finished the first sad waltz. And then they went into another sad tune, which was one of these Negro laments. Very sad. And then, a little later, they went into a quicker waltz. With the, with the Amazon uh, Tarzan people. And um, then the coffee machine started to get warm, and occasionally it went, some of the pipes went. Little jet of steam came out. And then the, <laughs> uh, when the first jet came off, uh, a priest walked by. You hear a moment of serious religious music. Then more and more jets of steam came out of the machine. Finally, suddenly it more or less exploded. It got so much steam inside it that it blew the top off and, and a great emergency whistle blew. Whee! And all the doors of the houses of the village opened and hundreds of people poured out and rushed in the cafe. They heard the signal for the coffee. Okay. 然後結果後來這個氣體它就逐漸變暖,它就越叫越大聲,然後後來就出現一聲那種像噴射氣體的,就是非常巨大的聲音,就那聲音一響出來之後 
所有的门都被打开，然后所有在小镇里面的居民都蜂拥而出，然后就跑到这个咖啡厅，因为他们听到了汽笛，就是表示咖啡煮好的声音。South American, uh, rush into the cafe, the villa robots never got his coffee because the other stretch is. Thank you. 